Hey everyone, uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about how we are going to solve this problem, which is called Design Tic Tac Talk. And uh, at the same time, I'm going to go over uh, briefly about the procedure we should follow in a coding interview. So let's get started. So remember in a real coding interview, the first step is always try to understand the question. So if there's anything unclear, please bring out the question to the interviewer and uh, at the same time, think about some match cases. So let's read through this problem. So do you mean the following rules are for the tic-tac-roll game on an end by end board between two players? So a move is guaranteed to be valid and is placed on an empty block. So and the second one, once a winning condition is reached, no more moves are allowed. And third one, a player who succeeds in place n of their marks in the horizontal vertical or diagonal row wins the game. So implement the take talk tag take tag toe class so constructor uh, passing one parameter which is the size of the board n and then a api called move indicate that the player is going to place the cell for row and column so a follow-up question is can we do better than n score per move the answer is yes so let's see this one so like uh, for this kind of sequence uh, finally who is going to move so finally player one is going to move because it makes a row and uh, the constraint says that we don't need to worry about empty board and the player is for sure going to be one or two and also it, the column and row are not out of the range so let's see, uh, so the next step after we understand the problem is about to uh, think about the ideas how to solve this problem. Briefly go over the idea with your interviewer to explain how it works and also do some necessary runtime space analysis, etc. And uh, get an agreement with your interviewer about the solution before proceeding to do some uh, coding work in the next step. So the, yeah, so let me just, uh, yeah, so the, the, the solution is pretty, uh, yeah, I would say it is a pretty easy solution. Um, so the solution is we are going to keep uh, three maps, but you can define just one map, maybe make the key to be a bit more, um, a bit more complex. So I just uh, define three maps, the row count, column count, and the diagonal count. So for the row count, the key is a pair. So the first two, the first one in the pair is a player number, and the second one is a row number. And the value is how many, uh, how many, uh, how many cells uh, that has been occupied by the player uh, and in the corresponding row. And similarly, it is for the for the column count. For diagonal, uh, the key uh, the the key is a pair. The first uh, number in the pair is a player number, and the second one indicates we use minus one or one to indicate whether it is a forward slash or a backward slash um, diagonal, and the value is a count on this uh, diagonal uh, for this player. So the constructor, no surprise. Uh, so we are going to initiate the three maps and then we set the end. So for the for for this move, uh, first uh, first of all, we need to see uh, we need to initialize a key, which is a player in the corresponding row, and uh, we define a helper function, which is called update. So the update helper function has two things: one is a map, and the second one is a position. So uh, we put the corresponding position into the map, and uh, if uh, after that, if we get the corresponding key from the map equal to n, it means that this player has already occupied, um, um, has already occupied the row or the column or the diagonal. If, if if that's the true, we are going to return true, which means the player is going to win. Otherwise, we return false. So we do this, and we update the row and uh, get the corresponding result from the update function. And if it wins, then we are going to return player. Sim similarly, we do for the column. We we apply the column-wise logic. For the diagonal logic, um, it's a bit different, but uh, not that different. 
So if the row count is equal to the column count, then it is a backward slash. It is, we are going to backward uh, diagonal. So we are going to put the player and minus one for it and do the same thing. And then if uh, row plus column is equal to n minus one, then it means it is a forward diagonal. Then we are going to do the similar things. So essentially, you can see that uh, the move function is going to be O1 operation, which is far better than O uh, n squared. And uh, that's pretty much it about the solution and the code. And after you're done with coding, uh, please uh, do check your logic. Uh, either set up some test cases to run it, and or uh, you may need to go through uh, some sample test cases manually to explain how it works. So that's it for uh, this video. If you have any question about the solution or about uh, whatever, feel free to leave some comments below. Uh, if you like this video, please help subscribe to this channel. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.